Okay, here's the first level of the Helix. Uh, I've done a little bit of testing. Uh, the cars that I put on there seem to run pretty smoothly, and I'll show you what we've done. Uh, in order to put the, uh, the track together for the Helix here, I used uh, somebody else's technique that I saw in one of the videos. Uh, Kanashiro Southwestern's uh, got a technique on um, putting flex track together on curves. It kind of works out pretty nice. It's kind of tedious, takes a little bit of time, uh, <clears throat> but it works out pretty well. Uh, let me give you a close up and show you what I've done, but you can also go to his website um, or his YouTube channel, which I recommend, and watch how Kanashiro Southwestern puts his together because this is his idea. I'm just using it. So let me give you that close up. Okay, here's one of the joints um, with the flex track. And basically, what you're doing is uh, you are staggering the joints of the flex track. Uh, you can see one of the joints is here, and the other one is here. Uh, the inside edge or the inside rail is the rail that moves on the piece of flex track. The outside edge is the, uh, the rail that does not move. So basically what we're doing is um, <clears throat> he recommends 10 ties. I went 8 uh, to try it to see what happens. I'm going to go use the 10, a separation of 10 ties like he recommends. But basically um, <clears throat> we're going to feed the rail that, uh, that moves. 10 ties into the next section so that they're staggered apart because what that does is the natural curvature the outside one is going to help with the inside and the same thing the curvature the inside one is going to help where the joints come together on the outside one um, it works out pretty well I'll give you an overview shot uh, to show you pretty much straight I've run that um, six axle um, locomotive over here several times and um, it has not had any problems where on the old layout it would derail three or four times going around the loop so let me give you an overview or an overhead shot of that. Okay here's another close up shot of what happens with the rail. Uh, you can see here on the inside edge um, I've got the uh, the rail pulled back about 10 ties, let's say 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, maybe 11 ties, 10 ties or so um, from the outside rail and you can see I'm using uh, track nails to hold it in place. I'm not uh, gluing it down or using caulk to glue it down. I'm not using any road bed either. I'm just putting the track right on top of this OSB. Uh, I'm using track nails to keep it in place it's not going to be anything fancy. The idea is we're just going to move trains from one level to the next. Um, but you can see, and don't break off the uh, the plastic uh, spikes that hold it in place because you need to feed that rail down and through there to match up along with a rail joiner. Uh, so like I said, go to Kanashiro Southwestern's website or YouTube channel and um, watch his video. Uh, you got to trim a couple of these spikes off, use a, a rail joiner. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, kind of taking my time on this first level and uh, making sure it runs okay. And we're going to do a couple of tests here one with the locomotive and one with the, just a car to roll downhill. Okay, this is probably the longest uh, piece of rolling stock that I have. And we're just going to do a test run here with gravity to make sure that the joints are okay. Um, that it runs smoothly and freely. Um, I already know it does, but I just want to show you uh, on this first level here, and I'm going to do this testing on every level um, until I get done. Oh, you can see that ran pretty smooth. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Not bad for gravity. Alright, let's do a quick test with uh, some motive power. Uh, this uh, engine, the six axle engine, is the longest uh, engine that I have. And this is the one that gave me the most problems with the last layout as far as derailing at joints that weren't uh, put together correctly. It's DCC. This is a Dash 9C44. Uh, so what I did is I got an old DC power pack out and we'll just go ahead and run this and uh, 
make sure that we have electrical connection. All I did is take some uh, <clears throat> gator clips and uh, clip the wires on here. There are no other feeders. So let's see what happens. That's not even at half speed. Doesn't seem to be having any problems at any of the joints that I put together. Uh, they didn't appear to have any kinks. Run it back down, see what happens. Seems to take the grade uh, and run fairly smoothly. And considering I only have uh, some gator clips holding the wire on there and not any feeders, it uh, seems to be doing okay. We'll run it back up to the top again. There's one joint. There's another joint. There's the third joint. So that joint technique that uh, Kaneshiro Southwestern has seemed to work pretty well. I see this six axle locomotive didn't have any problems with that. Okay, uh, for feeder wires on this helix, I'm going to try something different uh, other than just soldering. Uh, feeder wire onto the rail. I've got some old speaker wire. This is I believe 24 gauge speaker wire. I know some people recommend using 22 gauge but I'm going to use 24. This is solid strand. This is not braided. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed it up through the helix. You notice I've already got a hole drilled and when I feed this through there uh, what I'm going to do is and I figured out a trick there's a little gap here in the uh, the rail joiner that I could take this 24 gauge wire watch it see that wire f slip right in that gap for that rail joiner now if you're not sure how far that goes in there, I'm just going to bend this just to show you. That goes inside of there about a quarter inch or so. So what I'm going to do is, uh, like I say, I'm going to feed it up through that hole. Okay, I've got my feeder wires up through the uh, OSB up next to the... Uh, the joints where I'm going to solder them in. As you can see I'm using uh, I just happen to have blue and white speaker wire um, just as long as you maintain uh, consistency with your colors throughout the layout so uh, in this case blue is going to be on the inside and white is going to be on the outside. So let's go ahead and get these fed and uh, then we'll get them soldered. Okay, I think the soldering iron's ready to go. Uh, let's go ahead and get some flux on there. Uh, got our solder ready. And should go together pretty quick. As you can see, I got some. Uh, 
gator clips in there. I'm going to try and use those for heat sinks because uh, I'm trying to not melt these uh, plastic ties as best as possible. Alright, we got some flux on there. Got our solder. That looks like a pretty nice solder joint. Doesn't appear that I've melted the plastic rails too much either. I think I got pretty lucky. Okay, I've got all the feeder wires connected for the first level of the helix here. Um, I'm not putting feeders at every joint. I am putting feeders at every other joint. So there's a set of feeder wires over there. As you can see, this joint over here is skip, and there's a set of feeder wires here. Right now I'm going to do a test with the loco just to make sure that I get electricity through the system. Uh, there's only one set of feeders hooked up right now to the power pack. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Now this should run all the way to the top, uh, which lets me know that I got electricity all the way throughout the helix or the first level. I know that DCC with sound uh, locos are a lot more sensitive to loss of power. But at the same time, by uh, testing each set of feeder, I know that I got electricity. So let me move it over to the other one and we'll see what happens. Okay, now we've got the <clears throat> lower feeders hooked up to the power pack. As you can see, the locomotive runs all the way to the top. Tells me it got uh, good joints, even though they're not all soldered. Uh, don't have feeders to every joint. But I do have electricity throughout the system. And like I say, once we get all the feeders hooked up to the bus wire, it can only get better. And if you're wondering why I only did every other one, uh, example here, I've got a set of feeders, so the electricity is going in each direction away from that joint. Since that one doesn't have a set of feeders, it's getting it from the feeders 180 degrees across from here. So it's going out from that joint in each direction. I've put together all the levels of the helix. I've used up all the flex track that I had on hand. I'm about two sections of flex track short to finish off the helix, but that doesn't mean we can't uh, do a test run with a couple of cars put together in a consist. Uh, so let's see what happens. Well, that wasn't a bad test run. Everything seemed to be working okay, uh, no problems. So I think uh, the Helix turned out pretty well so far. Of course, I've got a few little 
finishing minor touches to put on there yet, but I think for the most part uh, it looks pretty good, runs pretty well. Uh, once again, thanks for watching.